this be one of the best moments of your life. You're listening to the Business Mirror Podcast for a broader look on business with Senior Editor Dennis Estopase. Good day. Welcome to the Business Mirror BM Broader Look Podcast. Today we podcast the Broader Look story titled Pandemic Prompts Reckoning of Philippines' Recent Past, Near Future. The story was written by Business Mirror reporter Kai Ordinario and was published on March 25, 2021. For the text version online, please go to the Business Mirror website and search for Brother Look. For the print edition, please read the Business Mirror newspaper. Let's get on with the story. It was the night before the 18th of March when all through the streets in front of houses, not a creature was stirring. The laughter of children and the chatter of women faded into hushed tones. Three million hungry denizens of the metropolis silenced to sleep their grumbling stomachs. Welcome to the bubble, a dystopian-like world previously stowed in the pages of books of fiction by Isaac Asimov, Ray Bradbury, Orson Scott Card, Cormac McCarthy, and George Orwell. Asimov allowed robots to march the earth, and Bradbury brought humans to Mars. Card viewed a military school in space from the eyes of a child, and Orwell introduced Big Brother's totalitarianism. McCarthy trekked the road in search for scarce basic need, food. Albeit not 100% accurate, their words presented a future eerily becoming the present. Robots tablets, space exploration, become ubiquitous. The kernel of this future was linked to the tampering of a nucleus, the cell, or the idea, unknowing that a virus almost the size of a nucleus would give birth to what was only imagined. Nonetheless, the more the future and the present intertwine, the more the world changes, the more things stay the same. Lack of access to resources, Hunger and poverty linger among the masses, and they look to leaders for hope. According to Ateneo Center for Economic Research and Development Director Alvin Ang, the country was pushed into the future much earlier than it has prepared for. United Nations Undersecretary General and Executive Secretary of ESCAP, Armida Salcia Alis Jabana, pointed out the pandemic has exacerbated the existing inequalities, making it even more difficult to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs. These existing problems include weak health systems and low social security. There are also the problems of high informality, inadequate physical space, and high disparities in income and wealth, digital access, education, and financial inclusion. Add to these are environmental stress and uneven access to vaccines. All of these have made the region's progress to attain the SDGs uneven. Alice Jabana said that even before the pandemic, the region was already off track in attaining the Sustainable Development Goals. The pandemic will likely worsen this progress, she added. Alice Jabana said the pandemic is already pushing countries in the region to follow a K-shaped recovery, where inequality is expected to widen. This means the poor will continue to spiral downward while the rich enjoy the benefits of growth. Last year, the economy tanked and posted a contraction of 9.5%, the lowest gross domestic product growth recorded since the Second World War. Traditional production sectors that contribute significantly to economic growth, for example, industry and services, hiccuped amid the lockdowns. Household consumption, the Philippine economy's primary strength, suffered and posted a contraction of 7.9% in 2020, given that millions lost their jobs. Former Social Economic Planning Secretary Dante Canlas told the Business Mirror that in 2020, one in ten members of the labor force became jobless, forcing one in five families to fall below the poverty line. Kanla said this could lead poverty incidents 
to reach 20% once the 2021 Family Income and Expenditure Survey or FIES is released by the Philippine Statistics Authority. The survey is conducted every three years, the last survey being done in 2018. From the standpoint of human welfare, the above means a profound decline in living standards of several Filipinos after notable improvements over the, at least the past two decades, Canlas told the Business Mirror. Canlas said the pandemic, a health shock, carried economic repercussions that outweighed other shocks. The latter includes the oil price shocks in the 80s, the 1997 Asian financial crisis, and the 2008 global financial crisis. Canlas told the Business Mirror that the coronavirus had the ability to disrupt economic and business activities that caused both consumption and investment to sharply decline. Ang said the decline in these activities is why the economy's recovery is slow. Key sectors that significantly contributed to its growth remained generally muted. Ang said the key sectors that contracted last year are trade, transportation, accommodation, and construction at 5.7%, 31.2%, 44.7%, 48.7%, and 28%, respectively. Dr. Ang said that while the agriculture sector was not hit as bad, it continued to be plagued by weather disturbances. Toward the end of the year, storms and floods devastated crops in the Bicol region and Cagayan Valley. The manufacturing sector's growth was limited by the domestic lockdowns as well as the slow global economic recovery, Ang told the Business Mirror. Data from the Philippine Statistics Authority showed that the manufacturing output continued to contract in January at 17.6%. Average capacity utilization of the sector was at 46.1% in January this year, the second consecutive month that the average capacity utilization rate was below 50%. Dr. Ang said this leaves the government to help arrest further declines in the economy through unprecedented borrowing and spending. Nonetheless, the effectiveness of government actions were hampered by lack of formality and low levels of digitalization, Ang said. Canlas explained to the Business Mirror that the disruption caused by the pandemic forced enterprises to adopt new production techniques, organizational structures, and information technologies to be able to continue to do business. All economic sectors adjusted, Work-from-home arrangements were allowed, and face-to-face -face meetings were minimized. However, doing so also minimized coordination in the workplace. Households also adjusted to new realities. Food and non-food products were bought online and delivered at their doorstep via porters. These are the new modes, whether in agriculture, industry, and services, can last all the business mirror. Canlas added that as virtual approaches in production and consumption gain currency, some work skills are rendered obsolete. To be rehired, laid-off workers need retraining to be able to adjust to the new production techniques that have emerged. As workers go through spells of unemployment and underemployment while retraining, aggregate consumption suffers, Canlas explained. To note, some 4 million Filipinos were still jobless in January 2021. According to Dr. Ang, the pandemic exposed the excesses of capitalism. He explained that market economics obeys natural laws that put things into balance. Ang said it is the role of other disciplines to place appropriate limits to achieve market equilibrium. Ang explained to the Business Mirror this dynamic was observed in the agriculture sector. The natural and organic way of agriculture means taking away chemicals that could be harmful to health over time, he said. However, he said the lack of discipline paved the way for excesses in consumption and production. But Canlas said that while capitalism had its limits, the economic shock brought by the pandemic did not show capitalism's failure. The government stepping in to alleviate the suffering of millions by providing assistance in cash and in kind was expected in a shock such as the pandemic. Canlas said the Philippines continues to rely on markets to conduct business and economic activities. The only problem is the outbreak of the pandemic, a negative externality, caused these markets to fail or falter. 
Negative externalities are adverse third-party spillover effects, Kanlas said. Government intervention is indicated, which has several requirements. Good governance in the sense of zero corruption in delivering the public health program designed to contain the pandemic is one prerequisite, for example, Kanlas said. The economy said, summing up, the Philippines is a mixed economy, neither purely capitalistic nor purely socialist, in the sense that the government owns solely the factors of production like labor and capital. Dr. Ang said the lessons forced on the Philippines by the pandemic don't necessarily lead to new economic models but to digitalization. He told the business mirror that digitalization will be needed to make the economy more resilient in the digital age. All roads lead to digitalization, a mantra that has existed for many years, Dr. Ang said. However, the government and even logistics for agriculture remained analog, he added. The economist told the Business Mirror that countries and even companies who were able to adapt to digital trends were the ones that survived during circuit breakers. All they had to do was shift their operations online, thereby allowing their citizens to access public service and their workers to work remotely, wherever they were in the country or in the world. Ang told the Business Mirror the institutions are not fine-tuning to the changing environment fast enough. This is what Ang calls his two-steps-ahead mentality for both government and companies. Dr. Ang cited, for instance, elasticities of supply and demand, clearly predict response, and yet, government continues to implement policies contrary to its expected outcomes. Nonetheless, Trade Undersecretary Rafaelita Aldaba said the pandemic fast-tracked the country's digitalization journey. For one, the number of online businesses registered with the Department of Trade and Industry, or DTI, increased to 82,000 in October 2020 from only 1,700 in March that year. In terms of volume of online payment transactions, there was a 624% and 130% increase in the use of Instapay and Pesonet electronic fund transfer services. Aldaba said during a webinar co-organized by the Philippine Institute for Development Studies and the Asian Development Bank that traditional businesses and startups created digital business models to diversify their revenue streams. Aldaba said retail titans doubled efforts to upgrade their e-commerce systems to serve online clients better. However, she lamented that these recent gains on digitalization may not be sustained. Aldaba said economic statistics do not currently give a clear and integrated response to questions about the role, nature, and size of platforms. Aldaba said large international platforms currently have complicated structures. She explained that because of this, a number of transactions are routed and processed in multiple ways, making it challenging for national statistics offices to get a holistic view of a platform's activities. Aldaba said that national statistics offices need to include platforms in their surveys to obtain data on turnover and employment. She added that policymakers need to assess and compare the country's innovation progress with its counterparts. Aldaba said this is important as digital innovation transforms markets and has subsequent impact on firms, market dynamics, people, and communities. She added that digital infrastructure is also needed as well as addressing regulatory constraints that limit competition. Based on the National ICT Household Survey, more than half, or 63.7% of interviewed communities, do not have telecommunication towers in their areas. Furthermore, majority or 70.2% of interviewed barangays do not have fiber optic cables installed. The data also showed 87.8% of these barangays did not even have free wireless fidelity connection. Also, a recent World Bank report said that around 60% of Filipino households do not have access to the internet. This despite findings by a private firm that said Filipinos spend 10 hours online every day. Getting the economy on track to an upward trajectory will require changes. For one, Dr. Ang said, the country's segmented view on health should be made more holistic. He told the Business Mirror that healthy living is a public good and can be aided by technology. In terms of sovereign debt, 
Ang said these must be treated differently from private debts. He said public debts are, in fact, investments that allow countries to address its challenges. Action for Economic Reforms Coordinator Filomeno Santa Ana III earlier said, Good economics allows heavy borrowing during a time of national emergency. Public debt, if used properly, becomes an investment that allows the country as a whole to repay, Dr. Ang said. In the same way, integrated and whole-of-society thinking that is two steps ahead will address the future society the Philippines wants to build, Ang told the Business Mirror. He said there is also a need to fine-tune the Ambition 2040 so that a holistic vision of the Filipino is improved. Thank you for listening to the Business Mirror Podcast. For a broader look on business, follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Business Mirror. Until next time.